right. Mm -hmm. All right. Hello, everyone. I am Justin, colloquially known as uh, Django Science Lab. Thank you all for uh, tuning in. Uh, we're about to have a discussion with Zarathustra's uh, Serpent. Do you have a, a name you'd prefer to go by so I don't have to stumble over that every time? I'm not sure it will be easy for you. My name is Arad. A-R-A-D. Uh, A-R-A-D? Okay. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So uh, Arad was kind enough to accept uh, kind of a, a conversation invites on the topic of toxic masculinity. So before we get into things, uh, if you don't mind, kind of introduce yourself. Tell us what your, you know, tell us what your kind of whole deal is. You have a YouTube channel. Uh, so kind of give us a little more info on that. Where are you coming from? Yeah. Uh, my, my channel is Arthur Serpent. I'm a major in uh, philosophy, um, second, second degree. Um, basically, uh, I'm an Israeli. Uh, basically, uh, started my channel in 2016. Uh, I, I'm a liberal leftist, and uh, when I saw the left kind of going in the social justice route, which to me is anti-liberal, and uh, destructive uh, to, to basically <laughs> my, the values of liberalism, uh, I jumped in into the culture war. Uh, I was doing that for a while. Uh, I'm still doing a little bit of that, but uh, kind of more expanded into uh, you know, my interest, uh, uh, f I'm doing more philosophy now, more about, uh, I'm, I'm a scholar of pop culture, doing more about culture. Uh, and this is what you can find on my channel. All right. More of that, yeah. Awesome. So uh, I've linked his uh, YouTube channel as well as his Twitter info down in the description below. Hopefully I did that correctly. And it's never a sure thing with me. Uh, but so if you'd like to go check him out, if you kind of like what he's saying, where he's coming from, uh, so please go check him out. Show him some support. Uh, but... Our topic today is on toxic masculinity and being a self-described, unironically self-described feminist SJW, I think we're going to have some differing opinions on uh, both the notion of tox toxic masculinity, on the uh, role of masculinity itself in society, and things of that nature. So I don't have any sort of hard topics to set, but what I was hoping... Uh, is that you could kind of, so I watched your video on masculinity. Uh, there are some points in there I thought uh, that I agreed with and some points I pretty vehemently disagreed with, but um, you can kind of lay out what your position is now on either toxic masculinity or the notion of masculinity. I'll, I'll kind of let you take it from there. Okay. Uh, so masculinity, the way I see it, is a code of behavior created by civilization over the years. It's part of the civilizing process. Uh, now, the civilizing process cannot change our nature, our human nature, but it can change our second nature. Yeah, so uh, it's, it, it can shape and reshape our behavior. Uh, and that's what it has been doing, uh, this process, for thousands of years. Uh, now, male and female have a different uh, nature. And uh, we, can't, we cannot change that, but we can change the way uh, male and female behave. Uh, and... Uh, and this code of behavior, uh, this second nature, uh, for, for men, is what is called masculinity. Uh, now, masculinity, uh, the way I see it, uh, is it's, it's, its goal is, uh, it has two main goals. One is to strengthen men to be able to deal with the harsh reality. Uh, the other is to sub sublimate the uh, bestial male nature, uh, male instincts, uh, so, which might be harmful uh, to others. Uh, so, the, the code of behavior sublimates it and refines men uh, to become uh, less harmful. Um, now, in in uh, in the modern uh, world, in in Western world mainly, uh, um, reality is becoming less and less harsh all the time, and because of that, masculinity has to constantly update itself and become softer, and. Um, now, some uh, don't, uh, don't do that. They prefer to, to stay, uh, to, to remain true to the, the old codes. And that can sometimes uh, result in, in uh, you know, in, uh, in over-masculinity, which, which can be harmful. And uh, if, if you want to call that toxic masculinity, then I'm okay with it. The problem is that uh, 
I think that the term toxic masculinity has been overtaken by what I call creationist feminism. I'll explain what that is. It's, uh, I, I distinguish between um, liberal feminism, which accepts the evolutionary process which I described, in which uh, the, you know, the second nature developed over the years, the gender developed, the gender roles, the gender, the gender behavior. Uh, liberal feminism accepts that this is uh, how it, it developed and, and, uh, and tries to you know, update, update the uh, uh, second nature, update the roles to, to be more um, equal. Creationist feminism uh, basically rejects the idea of evolution. It believes that uh, we are shaped by a single act of creation that happened thousands of years ago, which created something, a structure called the patriarchy. And the patriarchy is shaping us, and it, ha and it is imposing gender roles on us. And the gender roles that it imposes uh, are designated to maintain uh, men domination of women. Um, and, and because of that, uh, mascul masculinity itself is regarded by them as toxic, as oppressive, yeah? as oppressive, and therefore toxic. And, uh, and what they want actually is to destroy masculinity. Uh, they basically want to, they will basically want to destroy the gender roles. Uh, the femininity as well, yes, they, they don't like femininity either. Um, um, and this, uh, unfortunately, this creationist feminism is what at the, at the basis of today's social justice movement. And this is why I find it to be harmful. This is basically the, uh, the main... Okay. So going uh, forward in this conversation, uh, I'm going to, of course, I can only espouse what my own views are. I do self-describe as an SJW and a feminist, but, you know, obviously can't speak to any sort of notion that you might have in your head. So all I'm doing going forward is telling you my personal views without describing them to any sort of broader movements. So I think what you, uh, and one of the things you initially said, is there are some... Uh, you called it the uh, some aspects of quote unquote male nature that can indeed be harmful. Uh, for example, I don't know if you mentioned this in uh, what you were just saying, but you mentioned aggression. For example, T statistically, men are more aggressive. They tend to, and th this can also you know manifest as physical aggression, and of course that can result in violence and harm. Uh, and there are other aspects, uh, you know, related to ego, other aspects related to domination, other aspects related to uh, the desire for power that uh, might fall within that purview of what you were talking about, like these negative aspects of, mascul uh, of I guess, masculinity or manhood, whatever you would like to describe it as, that we could call toxic masculinity. And I think, in my personal opinion, that basically what is, that is what toxic masculinity is. Uh, the, these these qualities that in the past have been more dominant and uh, were undeniably a part of a patriarch patriarchal culture uh, that have kind of, because, you know, uh, we're, you know, this long evolving evolution of the human civilization, of course, some aspects of old cultures are going to seep in and influence new ones. So there are cer certain things about the old model of masculinity that are undeniably toxic. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with the oppression and subjugation of women and uh, the oppression and subjugation of people who do not adhere to these ideal male norms. Um, where I think we're going to have... So I don't think there's a ton of disagreement there. If uh, that's my... W w first of all, would you disagree with anything what I've said about toxic masculinity? If that's my definition, would you take any issue with it? Well, I mean, I would say that aggression, domination, the, uh, the drive to power are all part of nature, all part of our nature. Uh, and are part of the human nature, probably stronger in, in uh, males than in females. Um, and uh, so, so to describe them as toxic is to describe humans as toxic. No, it's not. Uh, so mm -hmm. to say something's part of nature is kind of meaningless. Everything's part of nature. No, there is literally no behavior no, there, that we... There, there's nature and there's, and there's second nature. There is there, there's a thing that that, that we can't change, uh, and and this is part of of, of our basic drives, uh, the drive to power. <laughs> Many philosophers, <laughs> quite a few philosophers, have described it as the drive uh, that that, uh, that uh, 
uh, that defines our, I mean, I mean the, the, that is driving us. Um, so, uh, and, 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 and the thing is, if you subdue that, if, if you oppress those, those things, you are denying our right to happiness. Uh, because, I mean, one of the things that, uh, that uh, often gets described as toxic masculinity is competitiveness. And uh, if, 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 if we can't compete, if, if we can't, then we can't win. Uh, so well, certainly I, you mean, would, the whole... I think you would agree with the notion that there's a slight, you know, there's a spectrum of competitiveness and it can certainly get to a point yeah. where it is toxic, where it is destructive yes, okay. and harmful. So it's not yeah. the nature, it's not competitive itself. It's this, it's, you know, uh, but, but, to, for but, lack but, of a better yeah, term, but, toxic competitiveness. Okay. But I think that uh, uh, what, what I'm seeing is, is the competitiveness itself. It's, it's described as as uh, as, as toxic. Um, this is this is the, these are the, the uh, these are the arguments that I'm seeing put forward by by uh, SJWs. Well, that's the benefit um, of, t of talking with one of the SJWs one on one, right? So you can talk to me, and you don't have yeah. to, you know. So I, I can answer for myself and my own views without having to, you know, uh, kind of guess what someone else is thinking. So I think competitors yeah. is good. I'm I'm pretty competitive by nature, and I don't see that as a negative quality in myself. Although it can certainly get to a point where it is very uh, destructive. So playing online games and smashing my computer because my team in Overwatch is not doing their dang jobs and crashing my hard drive probably is an aspect of toxic masculinity uh, as a subset of that like competitiveness, this desire to win, mm -hmm. even if the situation itself is meaningless. Is the, uh, that competitive drive can certainly be pushed too far. So it's not that you know competitive is, uh, nature itself is is toxic. Uh, certainly not. I think a, a certain drive, a certain competitive drive, is, is a healthy thing. But there can certainly be points where it can get too far. I agree. Yeah. The question is, do you think that competitiveness comes from our nature? Of course, everything. Oh, well, something that is imposed on us uh, that that, that uh, the patriarchy teaches us to be competitive. And, and if it wasn't for the patriarchy, we would be dif different and we would not be competitive. Well, of course, well, that, then, that, that, I mean, that's, that's kind of true though. Like, so we are mm -hmm. uh, a, an amalgamation of neither nature nor nurture. It's how our genes, how our biology interacts with the environment, how it responds to stimuli is kind of how our behaviors shape themselves. There is nothing about our natural state that is expressed uh, without regard to any sort of environmental mm -hmm. factors. Yes. So yes, any, any sort of innate call, drive is going to manifest call itself. Nature, yes. I'm sorry, what? That's what I call the second nature. Yes, the, uh, uh, it's, it's the way that our nature can manifest itself through our uh, behavior. Uh, behavior is, is basically, uh, second nature is basically a way to sublimate our, our first nature, our, our innate uh, um, drives, and, and, and basically turn them into a code of, of behavior, uh, which, uh, which we follow. So uh, and and then, and, then uh, and 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 it's it's designed to basically uh, direct our drives into uh, constructive and not destructive uh, uh, channels. So how do you differentiate between uh, a societal imposition like this this notion of masculinity that you're presenting as directing drives versus suppressing drives? Um, I would, I, I mean, direct. This is what what it should be. Uh, a lot of times, I mean, how, how is how is it uh, being taught? It, it is being taught through a kind of suppression of uh, when when a, when a little child wants something, you know, he reaches for something, and his parent tells him, "You can't have that." Mm -hmm. That's a suppression of the drive. Now, uh, the the uh, the ideal, the goal is, is for the the child to grow up and then and internalize this. Uh, this no, yes, this uh, uh, the, the, the understand why he cannot have that thing that he wants at that moment, right? And and that's that's that is sublimation. That is he will he will not he will himself not uh, act on on the desire at that moment because he understands that is that it is harmful. Um, a lot of time it fails, uh, and it can fail in in that men can become um, men or women, yes, also, but we're talking about men, so. Uh, men can become, uh, you know, they uh, suppress themselves too much, uh, or 
they, they, are, they are incapable of, of controlling the, uh, the drives, the desires, the, the, the emotions. Uh, um, can you, I'm sorry, can you be, give me an example of a, a suppression that could be harmful? Like a, an aspect a trait that is suppressed uh, with, I guess, a, an incorrect or harmful suppression of masculinity. Uh, what's an example of a trait there? I would say uh, uh, over suppressing one's feelings. Yes, uh, if, if if you can't uh, express your feelings, uh, uh, that's uh, th that's a suppression. Now, as as uh, as men, we are taught to control our emotions because uh, if we don't control our emotions, we might become dangerous. Uh, we might become mainly dangerous to women, uh, and uh, so so uh, we are taught to control our emotions. But in many men, uh, this control of emotions becomes uh, emotional uh, suppression, uh, where, where they are incapable of of, uh, of, of expressing themselves. Uh, of course, I, I definitely yeah, I definitely agree that, that that's a problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, this notion true. that uh, emotion is sort of uh, and and there's no I don't think there's a unified vision of masculinity, but in some aspects, in some views of masculinity, um, men should be kind of pulled away from emotions. They should be detached from their emotions and not uh, ever process them. Uh, and I do certainly think that can be very, again, toxic. And that will be a notion of toxic masculinity. This notion that men should not access emotions in a healthy way. That they should be detached from them in a way that certainly is not healthy mentally and that can even manifest itself physically yes. so yeah so, but if, if we look at history yeah, so we see well, how, how did this uh, emerge and, and i think it goes back to the stoics mainly but well, you're, you're talking about really harsh times uh, and, and uh, you know people were slaves people so they were detaching themselves from from the, the pain of of, of uh, reality and this kind of became an ideal that was taught through the ages and uh, we are working our way, you know, like I said, masculinity becomes softer and softer. Uh, so, and, 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 and part of that is, is uh, allowing more emotional uh, expression. Uh, so, and, and, and again, so, so I am seeing people talking about that as toxic masculinity, as, as the uh, repression of emotions, but, they are not making the distinction between emotional control, which is, which is good, and emotional repression. They are just taking everything as as, as if uh, um, as, as if it is wrong for men to to uh, to control to, to have any kind of control of their emotions. Uh, and 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 again, uh, this is the thing that worries me. This is this is why I call it regressive because. If we don't teach men to control their the, 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 the emotions, they will become dangerous. Uh, and, and you know, if, if we, if, and part of it is is the, even the denial that this comes from our nature. This is the the, the whole idea of, of the blank slate. Yes, that, that as if as if the patriarchy is is uh, uh, um, putting these emotions in us, putting these these drives in us. And and uh, if if we uh, so, so you have, have like uh, you know you have feminist mothers uh, kind of not teaching their children to to process the the drives and, and basically not teaching not, not explaining to them that they have those these these aggressive drives because they believe that the aggress the aggression doesn't come from from uh, from our nature but from the patriarchy so they think that if they don't uh, teach if they grow the, the children up in the right way. They will not be aggressive. The, the result of this will be that, that uh, uh, these children will grow up not knowing how to control their aggression, and they will be dangerous. To a certain extent, though, can't aggression also be molded? Can it also be taught and either enhanced or repressed? I mean, kind of, you, uh, you kind of hinted at earlier that one of the uh, primary driving forces of masculinity that makes it a cause for good is helping men control those emotions. Yeah. So yeah. this this part of nature can be uh, controlled and directed uh, because you know, directed. That, that's again that's a second nature. Uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm making that distinction. You have yeah. that that drive that comes from what what is called the id uh, in, in psychoanalyst uh, uh, language, uh, and and 
the uh, the whole civilizing process is to learn how to control it, to learn how to direct it in in, in the right and and so. But but the, the, that's the thing. You have to direct it. Uh, you you can't just bottle it up. Uh, if you bottle it up, it's going to erupt. Of course. Yeah. Uh, and and, and um, so so you have to acknowledge that men have these drives and and, and probably stronger than women uh, it's prob probably uh, yeah, I, wouldn't disagree. Are, I, I wouldn't disagree in, with that in yeah. general in general uh, mm -hmm. you know in, statistically uh, have those uh, drives more uh, stronger than women um and, and yeah so 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 the the the, the idea is the, the, first of all acknowledge it and then uh, you have to teach men to control it and and to control it means to direct it in 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 positive and constructive directions, uh, because it doesn't seem I, like this yeah. is too different than what feminists are suggesting, though. Like that, that, that's, no. that's certainly what I'm suggesting. That of course, like there are, yeah. and this is uh, to a certain extent. I don't like using human nature argument because you know I don't fundamentally. It's a very complicated topic. So I, I know you come from a philosophy background. Uh, I come from a, a more yeah. of a biology and kinesiology background. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'll I'll try not to I'll try to merge the two as be, as best I can, but I will fail. And you're gonna see it, okay? Um, so of course there are uh, urges and drives and this and this notion that I want this now and all of that has to be taught to be controlled. I mean, kind of kind of from the moment that we're born, we're kind of directed to control behaviors and we're taught morality and we're taught you know to value certain uh, qualities over others uh, and. Part of that is not using physical aggression or verbal aggression in order to demean someone or to harm them uh, in cases other than self-defense. And I think that's a good thing. And if, as a feminist SJW, that's what kind of what I would teach uh, in a form of masculinity. Like, uh, don't harm people. Don't let your ego get in the way. Don't use your, uh, don't use violence to solve petty disputes. Things of that nature. And I think that you would probably agree that that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, Go ahead. Let, let me just say about nature. We, we yeah we don't know uh, what human nature is yeah but 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 we do know what we feel, and 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 I know that you know I feel good. Let's say when 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 I dominate on in something yeah when mm -hmm. when I when I come out you know. When I when I when I do something and I, and I dominate it, it makes me feel good. Yeah. So so uh, so, so so. But how much of that I, would I, you ascribe to nature? And how... the domination. I derive from that. The domination is part of my nature. Uh, but how can you I be mean, sure the, the that? How, how can you be sure that it wasn't your biology interacting with your environment and a society that taught you to value certain aspects of it? Okay, I can't be sure, but playing the opposite. Tell me that what I'm feeling is uh, that, that is good to me is you know false. Um, I see that as a form of bigotry. I see that as a, it's it's oppression. Uh, it, it's 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 telling me that what I am is wrong. Uh, and 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 uh, and again, uh, if 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 you want to point out that in certain aspects I am being harmful. Uh, and I should change, fine. But if you're telling me that I should not be feeling what I'm, fe what makes me feel good is is wrong, is uh, and, and and we should change the entire society. We should revolutionize it. Uh, you, you know, yeah, because, I, I because, certainly wouldn't because, say because, that because the belief, you know, because oh, where I'm where I'm coming from, the the idea of domination, yeah. Is that thing that, that is used to, 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 to justify the whole idea of the patriarchy? Yeah, that, that, that there is this thing called the patriarchy that uh, teaches men to dominate women. Uh, and I and I would say no. We are uh, domination is in our nature. It, it, it makes us feel good. Probably again stronger in men because men are bigger and, and, and stronger. So so so. You would certainly agree more. though that just like uh, other mm. traits that we've discussed in the past, domination can certainly be used to harm other people. And so domination is yes. not a good or bad trait. It's a neutral one. It's all in how it's used. Yeah, whether right. it's used to That's harm right. other people. That's right. Uh, so you have to direct it in ways 
that are uh, constructive. But the uh, thing is, because it makes you feel good, it should not be it should not be uh, repressed. Uh, it should uh, again it should, uh... should be directed to a, to a certain place, but but not but not repressed. Not you, know, you should not tell people that it is wrong to want to dominate. Uh, it's hard to make something that black and white, right? It's I mean it's. To say it's wrong to dominate, it, that kind of doesn't tell you anything. You always need context. Who is dominating? Who, like, I'll, like uh, for example, I definitely want to dominate Nazis. I want to dominate horrible, like racist people. Definitely want to dominate them. So, and in that case, this this attitude would be good because it's always contextual. But you know, inarguably, that sense of domination, that sense of power, has been used by a patriarchal society. And you kind of uh, referenced uh, the the Stoics from you know. Hundreds and hundreds of years ago, uh, is still kind of has its influences on our culture, and so you know, hundreds upon thousands of years of a patriarchal structure in which men were at the top of the hierarchy does kind of influence our culture today. That doesn't mean it's a you know the driving force and everything. You know, it's a, a simple top down perspective, uh, simple top down hierarchy with men, all men at the top and all women uh, subjugated underneath them. But it does have its influences, and I think it's worth acknowledging that for certain people in certain contexts, and even in certain uh, instances uh, like societal uh, wide like systems, it can be a form of oppression that is left over from. It's hard to say whether or not we live in a patriarchal society now because, you know, there's no patriarchal switch. Okay, we turned it off. No more patriarchy now. Uh, but I think it's fair to say that that does have its influences and that can manifest itself in pretty harmful ways. So, so the way I, I say it is that today we live in a liberal society in the West, which is dedicated to, uh, to the ideas of equality and, and uh, freedom and all that. Uh, there are some patriarchal uh, residues from the past, uh, some ideas that are patriarchal that remain from the past, so, some groups even that are patriarchal, uh, church or something. Mm -hmm. um, but they are, not, they are not the structure. The structure is liberal. To, and, and my main gripe with, with uh, uh, the social justice movement is that it describe, describes Western society as structurally patriarchal uh, and not as structurally liberal, which is working, uh, uh, this is how I see society, it is working to dismantle patriarchy. Yeah, it is uh, no, not patriarchy, but patriarchal, uh, all, all the, the residues of, of, of patriarchal thought that are still in us, our society is dedicated to dismantle them. To, to come and uh, when you come and, and uh, uh, describe Western society as uh, patriarchal in its structure, you're basically saying that you want revolution, that, that the only way to, to uh, bring equality is revolution. Uh, mm, I don't know if I buy that exact and, argument. I think that does feel a little bit like a straw man. There, there are plenty of feminists who, is, uh, who would say that we are living in a patriarchal society still because, you know, that doesn't just, you don't flip a switch and that goes away. Uh, I think it's uncontroversial to say that in the 1950s, patriarchal society all the way. And, you know, we have been steadily getting better. I would not deny it's that sort of progress, more, it's but a lot more nuanced, man. It's a lot more nuanced. Look, in, in the fifties, of course it was. I, I mean, I, I'm, that's what I'm saying. It is more nuanced. The fifties were still better than the 1900s. Uh, yes, the, but, like but the... also, you have to remember that in the fifties, uh, the the, uh, the center of society <clears throat> was described as the family, mm -hmm. the family unit, and the idea was that the woman is the head of the family. That, 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 that was actually a switch in the 50s, uh, because before that, men were, uh, were the heads of a family. In the 50s, uh, this, uh, the notion was that the women are the ones who are uh, the head of the family. The men go out and, and you know, bring the bread home, and it is the women who are nurturing the, who are nurturing the children, they are running the household. I don't, kind of I don't see how that's a switch from what we had before that. That seems like a good, rather pretty straightforward continuation of what we had before that. No, but before that, the men were supposed to be the uh, heads of the household. Um, I, I guess I, I guess I don't know what that means, heads of the households. To me, that's uh, kind of the one that kind of makes the, the most the, major the, decisions. It, it, it means that the woman was the one making the decisions uh, in the, about the family. That was the ideal, at least. Um, and if you, you see that a lot in, in movies and, and uh, of the fifties. Um, and uh, and you know the, the, 
if, if you go back to the 50s and, and you read, uh, some men uh, feel like they're living in a matriarchy because they feel like they live in, in, in a society that is, is ruled by women because women are ruling the, 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 the most powerful place, which is the family. You can also uh, read several texts from that time. For example, not, uh, I don't know if it was published in the 50s, but The Feminine Mystique, where women felt completely like empty because their lives were completely defined by external people their lives were yes. not defined by their own ambitions they were defined by you know what does their husband want to do am i taking care of my children and their lives were completely uh you know surrounded and defined by their contributions yeah. towards other yeah. people rather yeah, than themselves I mean, and that was kind of, course, of expected uh, of them yeah but, i mean of course uh, you know uh, people have a different different uh, uh different ways to experience the world i mean both of us live in the same time and, and we have a different view of course but, but uh uh, so, so the idea that you know, men were in control, it's, it's always been a lot more complicated than that. Um, and, and it's always, I would say that the, the so-called patriarchal code has always been designed in, in, in a large part to protect women. <clears throat> so, again, reality was a lot harsher. Um, and, and the idea was that that men are the ones who have to bear the mantle of, of doing the, the the hard work of of, of doing uh, of of going out and, and you know and, and doing doing the, the work and and the, the wars and, and the politics and and those and and they are doing the, the dirty job so that the women and the children can stay home and have a good life. Uh, so now how the and, and this goes all the way to the 19th century. You, you can, I mean, uh, it goes back even further century. than that. But who was sending no, men to it, war? No, it, it goes up until the 19th century. Uh, in the 19th century, the, the whenever you know the, the, the family would eat because men, men would come home for, from the hard day of toil, and then you know they would have this bubble, which is this where they can be with the wife and children and not talk about the world outside because. They were in the, the kind of happy uh, bubble. Um, so, uh, and, and then, you know, they would have the meal together, and then the women and the children would go to the other room, and the men would start to talk politics uh, and, and all that. Uh, now that, and, and you can say, no, that, that, that can be, that there is happiness in that. Uh, there's also uh, problems with that. When it changes, when, you know, um, <clears throat> the outside world kind of invaded your living room, uh, in, and and you could uh, the, the, because the governments became more, uh, you know, more invasive, and 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 then you have the technology that uh, invade your living room and all that, uh, and then women could not could no longer be sheltered from from the world, and that's when they wanted to also take part of on in the. Uh, uh, and, and that's the beginning of the 20th century, uh, uh, the end of the you know, late 19th century. They, they started to, to because because they were no longer sheltered from the world. They they, they wanted the opinion to count, and, and then they demanded the vote and all that. Uh, but just I, just so we're clarifying that, oh, that's good, right? That's good that they did that. Yeah, yeah I'm, yeah, I'm clarifying uh, for my chat. Yeah, again, but but again, for. You know, it, the, the, it kind of uh, depends on your perspective because it could be it could be argued that women were happier before that when they were in, when they were sheltered from, from the, the the harsh world. Um, Why would they fight to change it then? Because, like I said, they were no longer sheltered. Uh, the world invaded their living room uh, um, because of technology, because of all that program. So, so women were no longer. Uh, uh, shelf from the world, and and then the, once the world affected them, you could also the, the, very the, easily make the case that they were kept from the world, that they were excluded from things yes, like politics. Yes, like I said, like I said, oftentimes you, you by physical force. You can make that argument as well. Um, so, uh, but 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 the other argument is also valid, and and that's why uh, I have a problem with the whole idea that it was always this patriarchy that. Uh, was designed to, uh, to to you know make make women subordinate to men. Uh, I don't think that that was ever the idea. I, uh, I think that the uh, 
the idea, the, the drive came from, from other places. The, the, the idea was to protect women, to, to uh, give them uh, a good life. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, in, in, different, uh, in different times with, with different uh, ideas, it, uh, it materialized in the idea that women should be kept at home. Uh, and, uh, and and again, uh, let's let's uh, you know, remember that uh, back then, you know, uh, doing the household jobs was a full time job. Yeah. So so uh, and and that uh, doing uh, the the kind of work that was in the nineteenth century uh, was uh, would have been too physically uh, uh, hard for many women. Um, this in certain cases, but also you say, you're saying things like they should be kept at home, that they should be protected. A lot of this could certainly, this is not distinct from protecting women. This notion that women are weak and need to be protected as they are my property. You could certainly make both yeah, of those cases yeah. that they should be kept at home. Yes, and, that, that, they, yeah. yes but, but I'm saying that this is where it came from. The idea that women are the property of men came from... The need to protect women, uh, um, the uh, not not from the not from men's desire to to control women, but from the desire to protect women. And then they created those codes that said, "This woman is under your uh, supervision. She's she's yours. Uh, she, she, yeah, she's your property." Now, now the, the the women were property, but but the you know there was always. Uh, uh, you couldn't just do anything with them, even when they were property. Yeah, uh, there were always rules about that. Um, so, so what I'm saying is, uh, the, the 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 main thing I'm saying is that it it didn't come from the, the like I said, it didn't come from men getting together and decided we're going to to make these rules so women be will be our our slaves. Yeah. It came from uh, an evolution of of, uh, of ideas uh, that uh, an evolution of ideas of, that undeniably thought of women as lesser than men, as not equal to some, men, as the property yeah. of men in lots of cases, as something to be owned. Yeah. As you know, they, it, it evolved into that, yes, but but it evolved not not out of uh, the the desire to control women, but out of the desire to protect women. Um, but and, yeah, are those two things really different? I mean, to protect women, you must control them. You must keep them at home. You must keep them away from other men. You must keep them out of politics. You must keep them out of the outside world that they didn't know anything about. And all of that, mm -hmm. controlling their access to information, controlling their uh, social circles, controlling their you know interactions with the world, that really sounds like subjugation to me. That really sounds like oppression to me to a T. You're talking about societies in which uh, most people were subjugated. So, so uh, in, by, by today's standards. Um, well, of course, uh, but that doesn't, that, that doesn't negate the unique subjugation yeah, of women. You, yeah, yeah, but you can't... Uh, oh, uh, when I say that uh, women were subjugated and they were oppressed, that doesn't mean, well, all men had it great because they weren't women. No, of course, there were, there's a ton of different factors. Men had it really, really, really hor horrible. And, and, you know, uh, they were working very, very dangerous jobs. And maybe a lot of people would like to choose the home life instead. But the whole notion of a lack of choice there, it's like I, I get to decide everything that you do, but it's okay as long as you're happy. A lot of people would say no. I don't, I would... I, I don't think, I don't, I don't think it, uh, the control was to that level. Uh, I think women did have some choice. Well, it's, but, it was uh... hard to, like, put a blanket statement over anything, right? Because... Yeah. There were very extreme but, cases but, in in both directions. Like said, yeah, yeah, like I said, but but um, no, but but what what again? What what I'm trying to say is that uh, it's it does not come from the desire to control women, but from the desire to protect. So the desire to do good to women, which which undeniably uh, resulted in patri patriarchal societies, um, which which were very different from each other. So the the uh, the idea of of uh, and um, my my big problem with what I call creationist feminism is that they don't acknowledge uh, change. For them, uh, the patriarchy has always been there, and it's still the same as it was uh, uh, essentially the same. Um, 
and they see no uh, change. It's the same structure uh, that has been thousands of years ago. Okay, well, and uh, and, and and today it's the same structure, and and this is what. Uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, kind of creationist feminists say. Okay, I can't and, speak uh, for the creationist feminists, and yeah. I don't, don't, that ideology is pretty unfamiliar to me. And I'm, I'm, I'm in SJW feminist well, this, circles. This, this, is my, this is my definition, but, but uh, because I, I, because again, I, I uh, like I say, they, they don't recognize evolution and they blame everything on a single act of creation, which which created the patriarchy, which is which is now creating us. The idea is that the patriarchy is molding, is shaping us to be the way we are, not our nature, but our the patriarchy, um, and and that's uh, that's that's destructive. Uh, okay. Well, that's again, I can't I can't speak for that ideology. All, all I can tell you is that, I, of course, I believe in evolution. Uh, I don't believe in a single uh, event. Yeah, human history is far, far, far more complex than that. Um, mm-hmm. But I do think that there is a generalized, is I mean, as broad a brush as you can paint for the, the entirety of human civilization, there has been an overwhelming trend of men being the top of the hierarchy and women being subjugated as uh, nice. something akin to property. And now, of course, there are different cultures in different time periods, depending on what you look yeah. at, but I don't think it's an unfair statement to say that, uh, at least in the past— uh, for the vast majority of uh, at least Western culture, because that's what I'm familiar with, women were seen as lesser than men, as less intelligent, as less capable, as uh, uh, a much more limited in what their skill sets ought to be. And some of that undeniably has influenced our current uh, current culture. The very fact that we know about it means that it has influenced our culture. But you know, you know, there's there's no there, again there's no there's no switch. We didn't suddenly become a sexist society versus not sexist society. You know, those things will operate on a binary. So there are certain, yeah. and, and I don't, and you yeah. can tell me if you disagree, but there are certainly elements of sexism still present in society today. Yeah, of course. The, the, like I said, I agree that uh, societies used to be patriarchal. Um, almost all societies, uh, uh, almost all human societies were patriarchal. Uh, and we are still, there are still uh, residues of that, like I said. Um, so, so why do you take issue with the notion that uh, the patriarchy, since it has been a part of our, you know, a huge part of our history, uh, going back not very far in the past, and, uh, and certainly like a long time before that, shaping culture after culture after society after society, why would you take issue with the notion that the patriarchy has influenced our society today and still has influence over it? Certainly not as much as it did before, I, but I, it's certainly I, I still think, there. I take, I take issue with the notion that... Uh, we live in a structure called the patriarchy, uh, which is what uh, SJWs claim. Uh, I, I mean, this is, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, SJWs that, that, uh, the, that I speak to, telling me that we are living in the patriarchy. And, and again, well, okay, well I, I can't answer for all SJWs, but I'm not comfortable putting, a, again, a binary on patriarchy like we live in a patriarchy yeah. or we don't. I'm not comfortable separating those into two distinct so categories. I, I think I think, uh, I, I think uh, today's uh, what's called SJW today is better than what we had five years ago, uh, when when I started the whole uh, thing. Uh, I think we we uh, the kind of uh, the radical left has kind of evolved a little bit. I think uh, in, in large part because of the uh, uh, of the criticism it got from from people like me and you know or a lot of people. Um, uh, so I, th- I, th- I think uh, you know if, if if today it's it's people like I don't know contra points or you know uh, that's much better than what we had uh, like uh, like okay. Anita Sarkeesian or the type of things that we had five years ago. Um, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. How long do you have? What? How, how, how long? Uh, I'm 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 at home. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I, I'm at home for, for the next uh, for, for the for the foreseen future. I'm at okay. Home. I, I got you. I just didn't, uh, didn't want yeah. to impose. Yeah, I mean, like, keep it's, it's, it's not very late, even. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, I'm not it's, saying it's, I want to uh, end the conversation. I'm just I just wanted to know because there's a, a certain topic yeah. I definitely wanted to touch on. Yeah. So, yeah. So 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 again, my my argument is we are not living in a patriarchy. We are living in a liberal society, uh, which is dedicated. to to, to, it's not equal, but it is dedicated to equality, and uh, and, and it does acknowledge 
patriarchal and, and, and it is willing to dismantle patriarchal uh, uh, residues wherever it, where it finds them. If you show me, you know, kind of a structural um, um, sex, uh, structural bias for, for men, uh, I will say, okay, let's change it. Let's uh, fix it. I think there are, there are places that have a structural bias for, uh, in, in favor of women. And also, let's change that. Uh, when you call it patriarchy, and, 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 and the thing is, you know, you, you, you have... So, uh, so uh, a lot of them acknowledge that, uh, that men, you know, also are oppressed in, 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 uh, in, this, uh, in this structure. Certainly, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and, and they say... The, the and, issue and is, say, to what extent are they oppressed because no, of their gender? They're, they're, yeah, the idea is, no, they say uh, patriarchy has no gender. Uh, 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 you know, both men and women are oppressed by it. Okay, so if both men and women are oppressed by it, why are you calling it patriarchy? Uh, so, so just talk about the structure and, and, and let's talk about how we can make it better. Uh, you call it patriarchy, uh, you're basically, you're trying to, to uh, you know, generate hate towards men. Um, you're making it gendered. Um, and, and, and this is not the way, look. Uh, is acknowledging that we've tr traditionally had a structure that did favor men in lots of positions of power, in lots of positions that you know make decisions, is acknowledging that fact and acknowledging its influences on today's culture necessarily hatred of men? No, but you have to also acknowledge that, okay, because of that, it means that it will take time until uh, women... Uh, until we have a 50-50, uh, let's say, representation for, for women in, in, uh, in power. Because, you know, women have to uh, uh, go... Uh, achieve. You talk about when, when they justify the patriarchy. Uh, so one of the things they say, look, uh, men, you look, look at the parliaments everywhere. Uh, men, you have more men than women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because who, who gets elected to parliament? People who have done something in their life and who have achieved something, they have a lifetime of achievement. Now, if, if women started to, you know, in large numbers, go to work only a few decades ago, it will take time for women to, to have the, the same number of women who will have the, that lifetime of achievement, like, like men. Uh, uh, so so it's, not, it's not that today's uh, uh, society is oppressive. Uh, is is uh, you know biased against women? It's it's that uh, we we are we are just on, on the way there. Uh, and, but and, uh, it is acknowledging so not... that we're making progress towards parity and acknowledgement that there's still a lack of parity. That there's still a lack of equality, and therefore we are still That's living it. in at least a form a a, a uh, um... not 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 structurally not structurally uh, the, the we are we are living in 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 some in in a society that has. Uh, well, if not structurally, uh, then how? Culturally, and, and, and again, culturally in, in the way that... Uh, um, women are... Uh, the, the society, the, the, the structure, is dedicated to help women get uh, to the positions of power. There's still... Uh, and, and, and the culture as well. Uh, there's a lot of, of, of work. Well, it's really, it's really hard to say a structure does this one thing uniformly or a culture does this one thing uniformly. No, it's not, it doesn't do, do one thing uniformly. The, the culture, the structure, the structure is just the laws that, that are, that are, and, and the laws are, are equal. And the laws are actually more than equal. They have, uh, you know, they have, uh, what's it called? Uh, 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 well, they fa they favor women in, in in many ways to help them. Uh, what was the name of that? Uh, um, to, 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 to 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 balance things. Um, uh, but in in, in and, and culture as well is pushing the idea that women are equal. But you still have a uh, culture is made of numerous ideas, and some ideas uh, still uh, are still you know belong come from all the times, and uh, and are still. 
uh, maybe holding them back uh, or like maybe it's 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 becoming quite difficult to know where the problem is uh for women uh but but surely there are some problems that uh still uh in in the way that let's say that they behave which which hold them back uh and um and again we don't know maybe women maybe women are uh not as good as men in in let's say in in, in math it's possible um or maybe they they are just uh, not socialized when they're young to want to learn math. That's also possible. Um, and and because of that, uh, once they start learning math, uh, they they are not as good as men. Um, both are possible. But but I want us to acknowledge that both are possible. And not say that because women are behind men in math, that means that there's a patriarchy that is holding them back. Uh, because it is still possible that uh, that they're simply not as good, uh, uh, naturally. But you also um, kind of acknowledge that it's possible that through socialization, and I don't, yeah, I don't know what other word to use, like structures, patriarchal structures that have existed long in the past and have not you know, been instantly demolished. Uh, they still exist in some form, maybe not formally in law, but certainly in societal yeah, expectations and things like that, uh, which, yes, could, could yes. have, which could, which could in, have just as much in, influence in over culture, life. In, 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 yeah, in culture, in 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 how uh, when a, when a girl grows up, how her parents, uh, uh, you know, uh, nurture her, how, how how they bring her up. It's possible that they uh, uh, bring her up in ways that would make her weaker in math. It's possible. Uh, it's but it's not certain. Uh, again, the, the the other the other explanation is also possible. It, it is possible that uh, women are just are just not as good. Um, so so I don't uh, so I want to leave the question open. Uh, but uh, then uh, then I come across SJWs who tell me, look, uh, because women are not not as good as ma at math. Uh, and, and you don't have that many mathem uh, female mathematicians as, as men, as male, uh, that means that we live in a patriarchy. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that we live in a patriarchy. Uh, so, uh, and, and that's the, uh, uh, and, and that's the thing that I, uh, and, and again, so, so we were talking about masculinity. Um, uh, it's, it's tied to that. It's, it's, it's this idea that masculinity and femininity is something that is imposed on us by the uh, uh, by the patriarchy, by the structure. Uh, well, even, to a certain extent, that's if... true, right? I mean, masculinity itself is a social contract, and therefore, it is imposed on us. Yeah, but not uh, it's but but it's 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 uh, not by this one uh, uh, structure that has been created in the past sometime. It's it's like I said, it's an evolving thing. Yeah, right? and it's, I would agree evolution. with you. And I would agree with you there. So it's changing. It's changing all the time. Of course. Um, here's so. Here's the, where uh, this is the next topic that I want. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't want to move yeah. on unless you're comfortable. Oh, no. Okay. Good. All right. Yeah. So um, when I guess SJWs or anyone talks about abolishing masculinity, uh, abolishing the concept of masculinity, here's my understanding of it, and here is what my uh, notion and uh, tentative agreement with that statement is. I don't like the fact that there are certain traits that are deemed favorable that are contingent upon your gender. I cannot think of any masculine traits that are favorable in men but not in women. Likewise, I can't think of any feminine traits that should be favorable in women but not in men. And to separate these two things as because you, as a man, you ought to be masculine, which means you ought to possess these traits, but you ought not possess these traits because they would make you feminine and therefore uh, lesser than uh, the masculine, or vice versa, like uh, telling women that you don't want to possess these traits that are, would be seen as good in a man because you're a woman. Uh, I don't see that as, I see that as incredibly harmful. Uh, I don't see that as harmful. Uh, I, I would say... Uh... Don't don't oppress men or women who want to uh, behave in ways that are uh, not typical of their gender. But uh, I think that, uh, like I said, I, th I think that we are different, uh, uh, men and women. 
Yeah, that's so that's I'm, pretty I'm, pretty uh, meaningless statement though. Like men and men are different. Yeah, no, but but uh, statistically, uh, there are traits, the attributes that, that are more uh, typical of of men, that are masculine traits, and and there are attributes that are feminine traits. And the thing is, uh, we are, uh, I mean, we are sexually attracted to certain types of of attributes, and uh, of I can tell you that. I am sexually attracted to femininity, and 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 uh, if yeah. if a woman displays traits, masculine traits, uh, it's a turn off. Uh, and, and again, not not everything, uh, you know. So some traits that are uh, considered masculine are actually uh, turn me on, but 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 uh, in a woman, but but uh, uh, I mean, let's say things like softness for 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 me is very. Uh, is very uh, sexually attractive, yeah. Uh, um, so, so, and I think that this is how we are socializing each other because we want to be sexually attractive to each other. And uh, and I, I, to what extent do you think that sexual attraction to... is innate and immutable? No, I, I think to a large extent. I, th I think uh, we are. Uh, the, I think it's really, really tough to say. In terms of things like sexual orientation, I think those things are more innate. But in terms of the broad uh, range of like your sexuality, a lot of that is going to be socially influenced. So I'm gay. I'm attracted to masculine things. I'm very attracted to masculinity. But my notion of masculinity, I don't know if it, it's innate or if it's culturally influenced. Like there are certain a lot of things that I like that certainly would not uh, appear in my genes that only could have come to me through my culture. But there are certain things that's uh, I don't know if I would be have this attraction, this this drive towards if I hadn't been socially influenced for those things. And a lot of the and a lot of the naturalistic arguments kind of fall apart here. For example, is body hair on a woman a masculine or a feminine trait? Uh, body hair is masculine. Yeah, we would call it masculine, which kind of throws the naturalist argument out the window because women naturally have body hair. They naturally have oh, underarm yeah. hair. Um, yeah, some that's, some that's uh, some actually have facial hair, so this is not uh, a an aspect of of yeah, but, femininity no, but you, that is built in nature. But yeah, no, 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 you're making a fallacy here because no, I'm not. Uh, no, I'm, no, I'm very no, correct no, in that. No category uh, uh, is ever. I, I mean, look, there's we we are there's the old uh, essentialism, the, the idea of Aristotle that uh, if we define a category. There are, there are certain essential attributes that ev every member of that category has. Yeah, so we defined uh, we defined a man as as a thinking animal. So uh, if if it if it doesn't think, it's not a man. So every, every man is thinking. Yes. Yeah? So, so it's 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 essential to men. Uh, so so you have certain attributes that are essential to that category of men. Uh, we do not believe in that anymore. Uh, we believe that every category is defined by a number, uh, a large number of, of typical attributes. And the more attributes that you have, the more you belong to that category. So men, um, so if you, let's say there are, let's say there are about, there are hundreds of, of, uh, of, of different attributes that, that are on a spectrum that uh, go from masculine to feminine. Uh, let's say, let's say 500, okay? Uh, if you if 400 of, of, of uh, if on 400 of those you are on the masculine side of the spectrum, then you are a man. Uh, so, so this is what this is how we define. And, and this, by the way, is, is right for everything, not just men and women. Everything in nature. Uh, you can't you can't you can never find. A, if you ask what is a tree, and, and you try to give me the attributes of a tree, I, I will find I will always find something. I will always find a tree. That, that doesn't fit the, the, uh, one of those attributes. Of course, so, that's so, the nature of linguistics. Uh, so, so this is how we define uh, uh, things today. We, we define them as uh, the, the, this, this, it's, it's uh, a collection of broadly spectrum. agreed upon attributes. Attributes. That's how yeah, we define things. Uh, it's, how... it's, it's a collection. Yeah, it's a collection. And and uh, the more you have of, of the uh, let's say of the masculine attributes, you are a man. So so the fact that women, uh, you know, yeah, have body hair, but but. Uh, but less than uh, men, and and uh, uh, it's, uh, there's definitely uh, um, a more feminine here. It's definitely a more feminine attribute to have less 
uh, body hair. And, uh, and but if it's natural for women to have body hair, why would it be favorable for them to get rid of it? Because uh, because men are wired to be attracted to women. Why would and, men be naturally uh, wired have... to be attracted to women to do something that does not come naturally? In terms of, of course, razors weren't invented uh, for the vast majority it, of human uh, existence. They're, they're wired. They're wired to be attracted to to to, to uh, feminine attributes. Yeah. So Does that mean men couldn't breed when back when before women could shave? Does that mean that attraction wasn't there, or no, that it was less? No, it was it was there. It was there. They were attracted to women, and 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 they were because of that they're attracted to humans that have less body hair. Now, when when we make ourselves more, uh, you know, when we work ourselves, when we sexualize ourselves, we enhance our. Uh, uh, our attributes are, let's say, our feminine or masculine attributes, whatever you want to do. So for a woman to, to enhance her femininity uh, would uh, shave her body hair, which would make her even more attractive to men uh, because uh, because men are attracted to less uh, body hair. Uh, and and um, again, what you said before about, yeah, yeah, society does, does affect, but... but I mean, I mean, in 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 the, in the past two, about two decades, there's been a lot of fuss about uh, about big uh, big butts, yeah, uh, on women. Uh, the other big ass. Sure. Uh, uh, now, before that, it's not that men didn't. Men as all there were always men who liked women with smaller uh, smaller behind. And more men who had who liked women with bigger. The it kind of, the spectrum kind of changed, and and this is the social the, the social thing. The spectrum changed, so, so the men who like who like uh, bigger butts are now uh, are now attracted to women uh, who have bigger butts than they would have twenty years ago for for the, these men to be attracted to them because the spectrum kind of shifted. Um, so, so the, the woman who used to be uh, considered to have a big butt is now considered to have, let's say, a small or medium. So, so, the, so that that type of men would now be attracted to because it's it's what we see around us. But, but, but the, the innate thing that the, it was innate to these men to be attracted to big butts or to small butts, uh, and and it, it, uh, there was before that, you know. Big, big breasts on women, big boobs. That, that was all the rage in the 50s and the 60s, uh, um, and then way into the 90s. And and and, uh, but but even then, there were always men who said, "No, I prefer, I prefer smaller, uh, small breasts." Uh, so so you, we can't be socialized uh, uh, completely. Not there completely, no. The, but it can also be pretty heavily the, influenced. Hmm? It can always be pretty heavily we, influenced, though, always, right? Like very heavily yeah, influenced. Yeah, but there's always. The, you always have your own taste, and and uh, uh, it it can be, it 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 can it can be determined by by the society you live in. So, uh, if if you see more of of, of certain thing, and and you want and you want, uh, let's say, if if you like. It's very, like it's very easy to find cultures with vastly different uh, notions of what makes a man or woman attractive. It's very, very easy to find vastly different cultures uh, across vastly different time periods. Considering like the human genome, our quote-unquote nature, hasn't really changed all that much in you know, yeah. thousands and thousands of years. Uh, yeah, but, 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 but despite the fact that we see these vast differences in uh, sexual attractions and uh, notions of beauty and things like that, points to, kind of points to the fact that yeah, a lot of attraction is extremely socially influenced and therefore can be changed with societal input. I think you would find that uh, women, let's say, who were considered attractive, had the same type of body. At, at some in some societies, you know, it, it, they would be fatter, thicker. Okay. Uh, in some, they would be thinner, but, but it's the same type of body, uh, and, uh, which, which is considered attractive. Uh, so uh, th there is uh, there is nature in that. Uh, how did we get to that even? We can wrap this one up, and I wanted to go back yeah. to an earlier point. Yeah, okay.
Uh, did you have any like final wrap up on that point? No. No. So I, I would just make the argument that a lot of uh, attraction is extremely socially influenced. Like I don't think I don't know I wouldn't buy the, the fact that there's like an, an innate attraction to leather. Uh, there's a lot of fetishes out there that just could not exist 10, 20, 30 years ago uh, that, you know, we're finding out that we're into now. now of course, there's some part of your, your biology that would make you into that, but that would not manifest itself without social influence. So that's that's kind of the no, argument that, I was making. Because, that's because leather is a symbol to a certain type of sexuality. So, so, yeah, but symbols are meaningless without social context. Yeah, yes, of course. So um, what I was going to get into earlier is why, what are some traits that we would consider masculine that's would not be favorable to see in women. What I'm, what I'm uh, kind of advocating for here, tentatively, because I'm still kind of working through my opinions on the subject, because obviously I like masculinity, I don't want to see it go away, but why do we need to gender positive traits? Why can't we have positive traits that people, that all people should strive towards without having to separate them uh, as being contingent upon your gender? Uh, well, like I said, uh... <laughs> Uh, and, you, and you admit yourself, you you are attracted to a certain type of. Oh, uh... well, of course, yeah, but you know, my my uh, sexual uh, attraction uh, doesn't uh, determine uh, like. My, 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 my claim is that we should do away with the whole uh, sexual orientation uh, identities, and just say because uh, they are constraining us. Uh, if I'm the reason why I am uh, I'm called straight, is because. I am I am attracted to uh, women, not women. I'm attracted to humans who have certain attributes, like I said, like softness, which are very typical of, of uh, and, uh, which which are typical of women, and and uh, and and the, uh, the 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 combination of of the uh, of the traits that I'm attracted to. Up until today, I only found in women. Now I have to say that these times are becoming more more confusing. You have the so-called traps, yeah, which 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 are um... uh, don't 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 use that word. <laughs> I know what you no, mean, though, yeah, yeah, um, which which are very very uh, feminine, and and I can I find them uh, sexually attractive, um, uh, but but because because I'm you know uh, because I'm. I'm I'm, const I'm I'm you know constrained by by this uh, straight thing. It will be it will be a change of identity to to actually uh, you know to 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 start dating someone who is uh, who is male but but is uh, not necessarily you know, looks like a woman. Well, that's the thing. We would still uh, consider that straight. Yeah, no. But let's say let's get rid of that. I'm just you know, well, we uh, we apply labels because it gives us utility. So when I say I'm a gay man, it no, means I'm probably. That's, that's going to narrow my options down. So by you saying that you're a straight man, I I kind of know now. Okay, if if I was single, which I'm not, you're not an option for me. It just kind of makes things easier for us. Uh, also, yeah. by identify myself as a gay man, typically feminine people, typically uh, women, kind of know now. Now I'm yeah. probably not probably yeah, yeah, not going to be interested. No, in. my, my point is that uh, we should depend as as a taste, not as a uh, on the identity. So, well, kind of orientation kind of hints at that, right? You're just kind of oriented toward it. It's not set in stone. So I, yeah. I think these labels give us utility. And until they start becoming harmful, which, you know, who knows what the, the future might bring, I think they give us u enough utility to, to maintain. But look, uh, to, to, your, to your original point, I don't think we should uh, uh, constrain people. Um, I certainly don't either. Everyone should do what, uh, everyone should act upon what they feel is right for them. I am not attracted to uh, women with muscles, but if a woman feels that she wants to work out and build muscles, that's her right. Uh, of course, we, not, we, we probably not... spent a little bit too much about, like, uh, when we talk about uh, like masculinity and femininity, about attractiveness. Because, you know, of course, there's a lot more to gender and a lot more to uh, gender expression and masculinity yeah, and femininity yeah, than but, that. But, yeah, but, but, but uh, a lot of the socialization, uh, I mean, when when... When boys and girls grow up, they are told, "Look, don't behave in this way because uh, it's not, uh, you know, it's not. It's not congruent with your, your gender. gender." Yeah, yeah, and uh, and I think that that's good advice. Uh, but well, what's good, I'm sorry, what's good advice? To tell them that this is not congruent with their gender, but don't. Uh, but tell them also that they have the the choice if if they do feel like it. 
if you're a boy and you want to, uh, you know, do ballet or whatever, do sewing. Why is ballet feminine? Um, I'm actually curious. Yeah, uh, hard to say, right? It's completely they socially they determined. They are, they are ballet dancers, but, but uh, you know, you 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 will be laughed at if if you go uh, study ballet as, as a boy. What if we change that? Um, what if we in introduce social like? Let's rearrange masculinity to include ballet. There's no re there's no reason uh, to say we can't. There's no natural reason yeah, why ballet no, would I, be considered feminine. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, this is more of a class thing. I think uh, it's it's uh, because a lower classes usually uh, regard uh, the higher classes as, as effeminate, and and it's kind of a so you can make fun of them because ballet belong to high class. So. Um, uh, the, the um, but but I think it's it, it is a good advice. It, it, you know, uh, but but, uh, but but again, uh, you should you should you should explain to to children that yeah, yeah uh, this is uh, against uh, you know this is not congruent with your gender. But but if you want to do that, do it. Um, and 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 then uh, yeah, and 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 teach you know, uh, and teach the children to accept it uh, that that some children are different. Um, so th th this is the way forward to me, for me, uh, uh, not to just come, uh, come on. Uh, look, w w one of my biggest gripes is, is the whole non-binary issue, which you, you, uh, you know, children are being told that, okay, you, 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 you are, you are doing something that's, that is incongruent with your, with your gender. That means that you're a different gender. I don't know if that's something that's, that's being there, told to kids. It's something that typically kids express themselves. And again, just like just like orientation labels, having that uh, kind of gives utility. If someone says that they're non-binary, that might give us more of an idea of how they might interact, how we can anticipate interactions with them. It just gives us utility. When it's when it's an identity, no, it shouldn't be an identity. Um, Why not? It, 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 because identity is constraining. You should just say. I mean, I mean, there, there, there was always. Well, we want to constrain uh, you know, things a little bit, right? Kind of there, was, there was the tomboy, the tomboy. Uh, so, so it was a, a sort of behavior, but it was a girl. Um, um, today, they're actually saying, "No, I'm not a girl. I'm something else." That, that's uh, that's destructive. That, that's. Uh, Is that's there any hard. evidence that it's destructive? <laughs> They feel they feel dysphoria. I mean, I mean, they, they uh, you know. And the, what's the, the number the, one the treatment society. for dysphoria? Hmm? And what's the number one treatment for dysphoria to alleviate that suffering? Well, current medical practices they, to they, affirm gender. No, they should they should simply um, accept that they are they are girls. Well, they're a little bit different. That's all. Uh, what if that's uh, not enough? Not, though? Uh, hmm? What if that's not enough? Or if they really well, don't well, like well, be well, like well, identifying as if, girls, if it, if it, because it, that identity is constraining. I mean, you, it's really hard to say that an identity that we shouldn't apply identities because they're uh, constraining, and then say no, you're a girl. You should have this identity uh, based on factors but, that you did but, not choose. But, but, but girl, but girl is not constraining. Uh, like I said, uh, the, uh, the 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 amount of, of uh, attributes uh, is the the spectrum of of what a woman or a girl is is so wide. Uh, that, Would non-binary uh, be even it's, wider? It's like I'm neither, I'm, or I'm both. Wouldn't that be no, even you're... more like inclusive? Uh, okay, yeah, no. If, if you if you just say okay, I'm I'm not that and not that, fine. But but when you when you actually give it a name, um, you know, the, call yourself all sorts of gray gender or whatever, then you're putting yourself in a very very narrow box, um, and uh, and and that's. Uh, 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 that's destructive. That's harmful. As opposed to, uh, but, girl? Okay, but, but, but that's a different. Uh, that's, that's, uh, it's pretty relevant. Why would uh, something like non-binary be a narrow box, but man or woman isn't? Because man and woman is not constraining you. You can be, uh, you, you can you can be what you want as a man. Uh, uh, again, uh, you, there is a, a kind of social expectations to behave in, in a certain way. Of course, there are. There and is isn't that constraining? The, there is also freedom to, to, to behave uh, in the way you want. Uh, and uh, Well, that's, it's kind of hard to say that there's freedom, right? Like, the, yeah, you might not be legally, you might not face legal repercussions for behaving in a, in a feminine way if you're a man, but you might certainly face social repercussions, especially uh, if you're, you know, born in certain areas. 
Uh, I live in the United States, and yeah, there are there lots will, of areas. There will, social, be social, there will always be social repercussions for being, uh, you know, different, for being weird. But uh, yeah, being well, non-binary, well, yeah, uh, but... defi defining yourself as non-binary is not going to change that. Um, what so, if we so, increase uh, acceptance of non-binary people and make it less weird? No, it will, there will still be different. Uh, like, like you said, you accepted, but there are social repercussions. Uh, because, uh, you know, some people don't have a problem uh, with, with people who are different. Um, um, so, and, 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 and you don't have to, on top of that, also uh, uh, add the dis gender dysphoria to to, to, us, to to being, you know, you're, you're already ostracized. Well, I'm, that, I'm, I'm confused uh, what you mean change. by that. What do you mean by adding gender dysphoria? When when you tell them, when you tell these children, no, you're not you're not a girl. You're something that, else. That's typically not how it happens. You don't like it, you don't put on a child that no, actually, you're the gender you weren't assigned at birth. That's really really not how it happens. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they don't. They are not born with the idea. I am not a girl. When do you think we develop a notion of gender, like a notion in our minds of gender or gender identity? When, when do you think we develop that? We are told what gender we are when we grow up. Uh, now, and there's a correct answer trait. for this, and, and that's based on on attributes. Uh, we, we are told uh, what uh, you know that you are a certain gender. Uh, based, and now you might grow up and feel like. What I'm saying, uh, when, do, when do you when do you think we develop that identity though? There's a correct answer for uh, this. The research has determined it's about as early as 18 months, at the yeah, very very uh, earliest to three years. When, when, when we when we uh, it's one of the first our, lenses through our, which we view the world. Hmm? It's one of the first lenses through which we view the world. Yeah. That's what the research yeah, yeah. confirms. Yeah. 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 And so it's very, very yeah. possible because the, uh, of the like, in utero development of the human body that like, the genitals and chromosomes form first and the mind forms second. You know, there's only two steps yeah. in, in, in fetus development. Those are the two. I, got, I nailed it. Don't look it up. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm being serious. That the, like, genitals and chromosomes, those form first and then later the mind develops. And sometimes there's an, in, uh, an incongruity is the only word I can describe for it uh, between the two. And research has not confirmed this. This is not a, a it's, it's a theory with a fair, a fair amount of evidence to support it. But current understanding now is that, yeah, there's actually, there's plenty of scientific backing behind uh, trans identities. That there is something about uh, gender identity that is held within our, our, our brains. And it's not binary. It's not a simple uh, switch uh, male-female. There's a lot, there's a large... Uh, spectrum. Typically, uh, it aligns with the sexual assigned at birth, but not always. And if it doesn't, tip and if there's a spectrum there, there should be something in the middle. And for a lot of people, non-binary gives them more utility and makes them feel like they're that they're better represented, and that uh, this is going to be a more I, accurate I, I, view yeah, of the world. I I, I, accept, I accept the the the, the fact that, that there are people in the middle. Uh, I don't think uh, I think that they should simply be called non-gender. Uh, and what, not, what, what difference does it make, right? If they say binary, if they say uh, non-binary, because, because, because that's not constraining, uh, and that's not. It seems really uh, arbitrary. What is and is not constraining. No, if if you when you say that something is non-something, that's not constraining at all, because then you can be anything else. Uh, the hell is non-binary constraining? It's non something. That should be like that should I, open I up the world. I don't, I, I don't like the suggestion that. Uh, the whole the the, uh, the idea of of the gender binary uh, is to me uh, uh, the, the 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 term itself suggests an essentialist uh, view of gender as if you know. Oh, my, I, I agree. Uh, that's men, why that's why I rejected gender binary. Uh, yeah, no, but but I'm saying, but but this is not how we view gender in, in, in Western society. We do not view it essential, uh, in an essentialist manner. We view it, like I said before, we view it uh, according to, to the, uh, the, to the uh, idea, not the spectrum, the idea of, of the family resemblance, of, of, the, of the idea that there's a large, a large group of attributes which define, uh, 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 let's say, a man, uh, a, a man, yes, and if you are, uh, and if you have m m most, uh, most of those attributes, then you are a man. Well, yeah, uh, but you also describe those traits as on a sliding scale from feminine to masculine. 
a sliding yes. scale, not a switch. Sliding scale. So no. it seems like Spectrum would really apply here. Yes. The, 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 like I said before, let's say 500 attributes. And, and each one of them is on a spectrum. Yeah, there's a spectrum between, uh, you know, hairy and hairless and uh, all, all that. Of course. Um, and, and, and many, many, many other uh, uh, such uh, uh, spectrums. And if most of, of those spectrums, you are on, on, the, on the male side, on the, on the masculine side, then you are a man. Uh, so, so, so you said, that, look, in your example, there's 500 traits. Let's throw out an arbitrary number. Yeah. If you have 251 of those traits, you're a man. And there's no, no difference. Are, between, and there's no difference between no, a man no. with 251 versus all 500. Those are the no, exact I, same I local you are, man. I said you are, you are more a man the more you have. How can you be so, more of so, something uh, in a binary? In, in the way that we have... Man, uh, this is a uh, gender, yeah? The gender is identity. Identity is a label. Yeah. Uh, is, is something that, that we, that we as, as a society, put on something. Of course, yeah. So we, we, we see someone as a man the more, uh, the more he has masculine traits. Uh, and yeah, that's just... how we label. Yeah, we label but him. you're describing a so, spectrum. So... Uh, it's, I, I don't uh, think this is a negative thing to call gender a spectrum. I mean, you can be more of a quote-unquote man. You can be more masculine or more feminine or somewhere yeah, in between. Okay. okay, so on that spectrum, <clears throat> uh, there's the man, uh, you know, man. The, see, well, the, again. Hey, go ahead. Go, uh, gather yourself. No, but I, I, I'll tell you what, 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 what uh, I'm really against. Because I've seen SJWs and non-binaries telling me that because there's a spectrum, that means... That there's an infinite amount of gender. That every point on the spectrum is a different gender. And and no, that that is not that is not how we we define things. No, we take the, the, the there's there's a spectrum of that we define as man, which you have on one side you have the more feminine men and and on the other side the most masculine men. And then there's the the spectrum of women, uh, which you know the more masculine women and the more feminine. And in the middle, a small number of people. We really can't. We really, uh, uh, you really can't can't place neither here or, or there, uh, and and uh, I would call them. Yeah, I would call them non-gender. Well, um, here's the thing. So, if gender is a spectrum, then yes, by definition, there is an infinite uh, amount of genders. I think that's broadly no. true. No, but, but no, no, hold, no, on, hold, on, hold 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 on. Gender is a label. We decide. We decide how how many yeah, uh, yeah, genders there are. Well, it's it, it could theoretically be infinite. Then, but hold on, let me explain my point here. Color is also on a spectrum that is infinite. Mm -hmm. By definition, yeah. you can you can narrow it down as much as you want to. But we don't have infinite colors. What color is my shirt? It's blue. Not blue. Yeah, it could be a couple shades lighter, a couple shades darker. You'd probably yeah. still call it blue yeah. because having a set number of identities, having a set number of labels, gives us more utility than having to memorize infinite numbers of labels. So we tend to group things that are pretty similar, close together. So even if gender is a spectrum, that doesn't mean we uh, that doesn't mean we have infinite labels for gender. It just means that it's a it's a theoretical concept that you know you exist somewhere on this scale. It's very very varied, and you know um, there's no sense in arbitrary limited it because you might get more utility instead of just having man and woman designations you might get more utility by introducing a few more terms you will not get more utility some people and, do and the, the whole, and, and the whole idea uh if, if if you say that there are infinite genders again that means that you will say, that means that you are saying that every lion in nature is a different animal. Is is you know is 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 a different species, because they are all different from each other. It's it's not. Every lion is different from, from the uh, every zebra is different from the other zebra. Yeah. yeah. So they are not they are not infinite species of zebras. There's one there's one species called zebra. And, yeah, but and, and again, the, the, we, we designate the, these species the, because it gives us utility. There's, between, there's variety between uh, inside it, and 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 this is how this is how we we define nature. Yeah. yeah. That's how we categorize nature. We we loop things together that are different, but they have a shared a shared amount of attributes. They have a family resemblance. Yes. Um, Again, we we group things that are pretty similar together to give us utility. Yes. So, uh, and and but and again, we, like, and, we can and make we those. Should, and we should aspire, and we should aspire to have uh, as little as possible uh, uh, to to to. Uh, 
to let to, to have as little as possible labels uh, for, for like I said I don't want there to be uh, labels for sexual orientations or sexual orientations sexual orientation should be a matter of of, uh, of taste not a matter of identity Wouldn't and it, we but, should not but again these, not these labels give us utility at least in, the, in our current society right now, they give us utility. Are you saying that you're a straight man and me saying that no, I'm a gay man? Yeah. Those give us like, that gives us information, valuable information that we yeah, can utilize. Yeah, Yeah. taste. Taste, not, not for identity. If, if you are... If well, you any, any yourself, can be an identity, right? No, identity is, 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 um, is, is, an, is a label, again. It, uh, taste is not a label. If, if you have a taste for something, it doesn't label you. It doesn't uh, have to I'm, necessarily, I'm, but it can. Like choice, yeah, but, of, like but, but, choice of romantic but, but, partner is that's a pretty but, important but, but, uh, but, quality. But, 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 but rather, we we will not because at some point in the past, we've labeled people according to race. Mm -hmm. Race, uh, uh, we, we've we've basically uh, invented the concept of race, yep. uh, and and and, uh, and and distinguished between people, and and you know it 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 eventually led to bad things. Of course, um, yeah. And so I don't want to to to, to create those uh, different uh, uh, different groups. We are all humans, and uh, yeah, we have different tastes and and different uh, attributes. But uh, but it should not be that that we are we sh we, we 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 should not consider ourselves as belonging to different groups uh, to different identities. Uh, Why not? Based based on. Based on biological innate, uh, because this creates, uh, you know, a partition. This partitions our society with, with no need. Uh, I'm, um, I'm really having trouble how, how. Why wouldn't that logic apply to men and women? Why do we have these categories? Okay, if yeah. everything's so just taste, right? Yes. Yeah, so, so men and women are actually, they are actually. Uh, There's utility in in those labels, right? Yeah, there are there are real differences. Uh, in, in in their biology that they have the, the different needs um it it, it makes sense mm. to, to to let's say uh needs is is uh, pretty i would say well yeah. go ahead it, it's not important no, I, mean, I mean it makes sense to 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 have let's say i i go to to uh you know to to, uh, to the shop to buy myself uh you know uh, hygiene or uh, products or whatever I, 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 so I'll go to the. To, so, so it makes sense to, to have a man uh, sh uh, shelf and a, and a woman's shelf, because I don't need to go through tampons and and, and all that because I, I really sure. have no need for that. But but there is no need to to create one shelf for, for white people and one shelf for black people. Of course. And put hair for that. You know. Wait. People, uh, that actually. Have, oh, have, that actually. Tend to have di different hair. Okay, yeah. uh, black people, but, but, okay, but there's no need to create different shelves. So, so, so the, we will put everything on the shelf, and 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 we will find what what uh, fits our hair. Because I mean, uh, yeah, okay, black people are, have curls, but, but I, I too. Uh, so, so I, I may want to use the same uh, hair products that they do, uh, even though I'm white. So, yeah. so. Uh, th I mean, th the problem the, would would be oh, if like you tried to go to the ethnic hair selection and they didn't let you buy anything. That would be the problem, right? But it's using that as a means yeah. of utility. Like, okay, uh, this, there are certain types of hair, and there are lots of different types of hair, even among like white people. Uh, that's it. Just gives uh, gives you a little yeah, more yeah. utility to lay, label. This hair is oily. This hair is dry. This hair is crimpy. So, so stuff like that. Yeah. It gives you utility to yeah, label but, uh, these products. Yeah. But, okay. But but not according to to skin color. Uh, I, I I you know I, I would not make a different shell for hair products according, based on skin color. Okay. Uh, that's that's something that uh, I could I could see an argument for and against. It all, but it all depends on how much uh, utility versus harm it brings what us. What I'm saying we should not we should not we should not uh, uh, partition society in that way, but based on, on ba not based on skin color, not based on on sexual orientation, not based on uh, class. Uh, we should. We, and, what, what's and, uh, the um, so? Why does the acknowledgement of an identity necessarily dictate how we structure society? Identity. Uh, this, these are group identities, yes. And group identities means that you, you are, it's, it's, it's tribal. It means that you. Uh, <clears throat> it, it can't. It, it certainly can be, but not always. Certain, you belong to a certain tribe, and when it's when those tri now when those tribes are based on let's say certain uh, uh, interests that you have, hobbies or whatever you you so so you and you and you, and you get together with with uh, people who have that same hobby, fine, because you can always choose to leave that. But uh, when when it's uh, 
those those are not just uh, the innate things are not just uh, identities; they are categories. They are the way the way we categorize uh, society, and and every one of us belongs to them because on on official forms you have to you have to to, to put uh, are you male or female are you and and uh, uh, I don't want uh, innate natures innate uh, attributes uh, to be uh, to be identities. To, uh, I don't want categories to be identities. It, it seems um, like there are necessarily should, like like there are some situations should, where you wouldn't want these identities, right? I agree. Like mm -hmm. you know, we shouldn't st uh, structure our like society around sexual orientation and like neatly group people into categories. Okay, you're gay. You go over here. You're bi. You have to go over here and associate with all the bi people. Stay away from the straight people. Of course, that would be terrible. But identifying as a, a gay man does help me find a, a romantic partner. Help me find it. Helped me find my yeah. husband because I, you know yeah, I but, but shared this identity. You know, I was seeking something who was compatible with that identity. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to be an identity, though. Now, now look, there is a gay identity because uh, because there is a gay culture, and that's because gays were uh, uh, oppressed for so long. They had to go underground and yeah. they created their own like, culture. So, so the, the, there is, and, 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 and like I said, culture. I, I do. Uh, I do see as 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 a positive thing when you have a, a cultural identity. Well, so uh, here's so, a, here's yeah. a really interesting example there. So me identify so me adopting that gay identity, I was never a part of that gay culture. Grew up in a very very okay. small town, completely divorced from yeah. it. So that's, that's like, right. That's so right. me so me having when that gay cultural, identity was for utility. When it's, identity, when it's a cultural identity, you 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 are free not to not to join it. But when you make uh, something biologically innate uh, an identity. Then it is something that is imposed on you by society, um, and 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 you know if and one one of my uh, problems with with creating many genders is that, uh, that that because gender is a category. Um, so if you if if you say that uh, let's say a woman with the short hair with short hair is is now a different gender, then women who want to cut the hair short, but want to still be, uh, be regarded as women will not be able to do so. Unless um, we say they can, probably. Well, we don't mm -hmm. define gender based on like how short your hair is. That would be ridiculous and extremely not productive, and give us no utility yeah, but, whatsoever. Yeah, but, and, and and then the question becomes, what does it mean exactly that you have a different gender? Um, it's an interesting conversation to have, right? Yeah, but which uh, which which is a, which is a different conversation, and and uh, it's a conversation I've been having. With uh, with people with with uh, people who are trans and, and none of them could explain to me what it means to have a different gender, uh, which is not uh, man or woman. Well, um, can you can you uh, define? I, I'm, it's crazy that I haven't asked you this yet. What's your definition of? Since we just uh, we're talking about trans people, what's your definition of a man? As, as I said, uh, someone who has uh, mostly uh, masculine traits. Yeah, but that's that's kind of a circular definition. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Uh, that, that that's the only that's the only type of definition you can have. And that's someone who has masculine traits. So, hmm? what, what if a woman what has masculine of... traits? And what makes her a woman? I, I don't know. It's really tough. Uh, that's why. That's kind of why we I... rely so much on self identity. Okay. Uh. Because it is amorphous, well, because it is contextual it? within our society. You kind of interact I with your society, I you find which label seems to fit you the best, seems to give you the most information yeah. about yourself to present to the world, yeah. and choose it. That seems right. to be a good way to, to, to structure things. Yeah, yeah. And th this is how we, we define, we label people, we label ourselves. Right. Uh, we label ourselves by the label that, that fits, that mostly fits uh, mm -hmm. the kind of attributes that we have. We find certain attributes in ourselves, and we uh, let's say you are uh, you don't you are not born with with an identity. You're not born with a label. Right. You are born with, with, with certain attributes. Let's say you are let's say you are born uh, no a religious person. You are you are born into a certain religion, and then you find uh, in yourself that you do not believe in God. Uh, so then uh, you you uh, so you grew up into a religious family. You you let's say you you were Christian, uh, but then you find that you in your heart uh, that was imposed on you. Yeah, being Christian. Let's let's say you find that in your heart you you have no faith. Then you then you seek out well, what okay what am I? And then you find that it's called atheist. 
So then you start to label yourself like that. So, so, so the labels are something that is created by society and we adopt. And, and basically, uh, an identity is something that chooses you. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't really decide. You don't. You don't decide. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be an atheist. It's something that. Uh, uh, it's something do, that right? it's, it's something that happens. Uh, you, you lose your. Uh, well, no, because you still have to make an active choice. Uh, granted, that choice is going to be dictated by whether or not society presents you that choice, but it's still ultimately a choice that you must choose to make. You know, you are not going uh, to become an atheist uh, yes. outside of your own uh, no, free will. But, uh, well, yeah, but then you are lying to yourself. If if you are if you don't believe in God and you still uh, call yourself a Christian, uh, then you're just lying to yourself uh, and to everyone else. Um, so, so, and I say, okay, now the same thing goes with gender. Yeah, if it, let's say you are born, uh, you're born, you're born uh, a boy. You know, they tell they tell you that you are a boy, but based on your uh, that that's what you were assigned at birth. Um, and you go up and and, and, you, and you find that you have uh, attributes. Uh, you want to let's say you want to act in a feminine way, or you want to have a, a female body. Uh, then you you know then you realize that you are actually a woman. Uh, so, so and then you can start to to switch. Um, where was I going with that? Um, uh, what was what was what was my point anyway? Uh, I can't remember now, uh, but but yeah. So so, so yeah. This is what uh, you asked. You asked me what what. Uh, how do I define a man? Someone That's yeah. How, you just find it as someone who possesses masculine traits. Yes, uh, this is a label uh, that that you you know we put on you or you put on yourself or you children or you call yourself if you have mainly masculine traits. Um, and and if you ask what masculine, well, masculine is what uh, typical of men. Uh, a lot of the traits that you described in uh, in masculinity that aren't re regulated to your to your body. So the, I, I'm going to kind of separate uh, things related to your body, your physical appearance, and how you present yourself, things like that, mm -hmm. versus like uh, traits you espouse to the world, like things that you know come from your brain, your behaviors, and such like that. What are some behaviors that you would define as masculine? And why do they need to be gendered? So going outside of things like body, hair, uh, physical strength, stuff like that, just behaviors. Things that theoretically either gender or all genders could take part in, but uh, we've somehow, we've for some reason, de designated certain behaviors as masculine and others as feminine. Which is that distinction, does that give us utility anymore? Is that valuable? To, is that something valuable we should keep? It's something that we should uh, always ask ourselves. But I would say that uh, men, boys, let's say, children, mm -hmm. uh, children uh, are taught from from, a, from an early age. Uh, boys are taught to be uh, to speak in a more authoritative way, and girls are taught to speak in a more uh, in a softer way. Uh, even though at this age the voices are not very different from each other, but uh, but this is because as they grow older. And become men and women. Uh, the uh, the authoritative way of speaking is goes better with the male voice, while the softer way of speaking goes better with the with the uh, female voice. Why? With women. If you had a woman who was in charge of your company, wouldn't you want to have an authoritative voice? If you have a woman teacher, don't you want to have uh, like a commanding voice in the classroom? Uh, the, you know, she can be uh, authoritative in her way, but uh, you know, the soft can also be authoritative. But, but uh, you know, why is it necessary uh, for her to be soft, though? It kind of works better, uh, and and uh, uh, it and just you, and that's kind of just that's just justifying it in itself. Like it's better because it's better. I mean, this is how we. Uh, it's just the way we we respond to it. Um, we respond to. Uh, we respond to a, a soft uh, uh, woman's voice. Um, it does something to us. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a, a motherly voice. Um, oh, and, course, and again, but, but is that it's, it's is a motherly that, voice? That it, all right, let's take the motherly voice thing for example. So, would, would you consider that a positive trait to have a nice motherly voice, something that's soothing, it's calming, it's very empathetic, that makes you feel safe? Yes. Would you consider that a good yeah. thing? Would it be a bad thing yeah. coming from a man? Or would it be lesser? 
I is think it, is man, its morality or goodness uh, I, in any way affected if it's coming from I, I, man? I think, I think because of our biology, uh, man are not as good as speaking in a soft voice. That's nonsense. Yeah. I can speak in a soft voice like this. Sometimes uh, a little bit of bass in the voice. I don't think it, has, I don't think it has the same effect. No, it might not have the same uh, effect, but it's not going to have the same effect on you as it would me or anyone else. All that effect is subjective. And a male voice can certainly um, be very comforting. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I think it's uh, something that we react to some, uh, on a kind of a primal level. Uh, and, and again, all of this is uh, yeah, that, be, uh, can, that primal level. Yeah. Okay, it's, not that deep. it's not that deep, right? Like a mm -hmm. lot of that is socially conditioned. Like, what if you grew up? Sorry, I didn't get it. Like, for example, what if you grew up with a single father? Your father is the one who raised you. Your father has a big, deep voice. Your father was super loving and caring. Maybe you would associate that de uh, a deep mm -hmm. male voice, a raspy, deep male voice. Maybe you associate that uh, with nurturing, with uh, with care, with love. So it could be completely uh, socially conditioned to a certain extent. Okay. Like, uh, when you actually, say that a certain gender is better sure. at something, uh, you might be talking about statistical averages, but that doesn't account for the individual. Yeah, uh, but so, uh, it's, no, so it's these no, prescriptions it's also, of masculinity. It's all well, yeah, it's all statistical. Yeah, it's all statistical. But, yeah, but statistics are meaning for the are meaningless for the individual. Uh, but they are, but they are meaningful for to to, to for, for the kind of uh, conversation that we are having. Of, of course, what we were talking about masculine. Yeah, but we're talking about prescriptive things. You're trying. You're kind of talking about a return to masculinity. Why are there are there certain traits that men should have that women should not? Or what are what are some traits again? What are some traits in men that would be favorable for men to have, but less favorable for women to have? Uh, and you kind of define masculinity as separate from femininity. So we'll, let's let's explore that a little bit. And uh, I'm I'm going to say twenty minutes uh, we got left. Okay. Okay. You know, uh, uh, strength because um, men are the one who are supposed to be uh, you know in in the. Uh, uh, in in in, in uh, because ma because males are physically stronger than in 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 situation that requires strength, uh, men are uh, the ones who who are uh, required to, to be the ones who take uh, you know. So what? Why should get, we? Get, why should we, we want our women to be physically strong? Stuff gets going. Hmm? I say, why shouldn't we want so, our women to be strong too? If strength is a, is a positive virtue. <laughs> Women cannot be as strong as men. They can't uh, be as physically. well. No, but why? Do, why does that matter? They can still be physically strong. They can still be physically strong, er, than they were before. Why? Why wouldn't strength be a, a value component in women as well? It's not. It's just not a masculine value. Uh, they they can be if they want to, but but uh, the the it, it's considered masculine because men are stronger by by nature. And and uh, okay, another thing, uh, self control. Uh, like I said before. Uh, it's partly because men need to control their emotion because their emotion can be uh, if they don't, they can be harmful uh, the, the other thing is you have to react quickly in in, in, in you know, crisis and when, when something, let's say if you have let's say you're in some place and something collapses the women tend to kind of at, at the first second scream and the men will, will react and, and you know uh, Go and catch it or, or do something like that, because men are, are, are taught to act in and, and, and to act. Wait, if they're taught to act like that, it's not an eight. They're taught to act like that, it's not an eight. You do not yes, need to be taught something that, 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 Yeah, yeah, that's masculinity. That's second nature. That they second taught. nature, which, you, and, which and is not an eight. And, and, and we and, and we and, and we te and we teach men to do that because men. Are better at this because they are stronger. They they, they can. Uh, does every quick decision a require physical reaction. strength? Mm -hmm. does every does every quick decision require mm -hmm. physical strength? Uh, you're breaking off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Does every quick decision that requires like very very quick decision making do, do all of them require physical strength? So you work in a hospital um, and someone's and someone's like a, a I forgot I forgot the term for it. They're they're bleeding out or something like that. Something's gone horribly wrong. That's a decision that requires knowledge, not physical strength. Why wouldn't a woman be equally suited yeah. to that? Why, why should we instill that I, that virtue in her? That's and, a good and thing. I, and, and I think that, that in those types of in those types of things, I think that women are being socialized to react quicker. 
Well, yeah, but um, so what's the difference? Why, why should reaction well, time be more valued um, in one gender over another? If this is a positive quality, it doesn't matter if uh, statistically one group is better. It, if it's a good quality, we should have as much of it as possible. Uh, Again, based on what uh, the uh, genders are good at, uh, it men, men are supposed to. to uh, I'm bad at cardio. Does that mean I shouldn't uh, do it? Like, what? I'm bad at cardio. Does that, that mean I should? Better? I'm sorry. I'm bad at cardio. Does that mean I shouldn't try to get better at it? And just because you're not uh, innately uh, the best at something doesn't mean it wouldn't be wouldn't be value valuable for you to attain more of that quality. Society uh, is, you know, there are certain things which we have developed, the gender roles have developed over time, like we said, uh, based on the, the things that uh, men are, let's say, required to do, uh, like physical strength and all that. And, and based on, uh, let's say, things that women are, let's, let's say, nurturing children, and that's also, uh, which is more uh, mother, a motherly thing. Um, but it doesn't have so, to be. So, we we kind of we, we like we can teach men to be extremely empathetic uh, and good with kids, and isn't that a good uh, thing? Um, I'm not sure. Again, I'm not sure that you're not the, sure uh, it would be good if, if... connection. I'm sorry. What? Hmm? Go ahead, I'm, sorry. I'm not sure. That the, I'm not sure that the connection the connection between boys and uh, you know children uh, to the mother uh, to the father is at the same level as it is to their mother. Um, Again, it's it's question it's questionable, but but this is how it's developed, and 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 to change that, uh, it developed on, based on certain ideas that this is what men do, this is what women do. Uh, I'm, I'm just confused because earlier you, you were saying to... that uh, ascribing things, putting people into boxes based on innate qualities, based on immutable qualities, was a bad thing, and now you're saying that because men are typically better at this and women are typically we've already we've always done that, we ought to continue that tradition. It seems like that's a, that's kind of a contradiction. Yeah, yeah, but I, like I said, I I, I do uh, want to keep the gender, the two genders. Uh, this is why I, I believe they do. Uh, have uh, it is uh, good to maintain two uh, categories, two identities, uh, two categories. Um, and uh, I guess I'm, I'm confused uh, about your I'm prescriptive not... attitudes towards these genders. Like, if you were if you were born a male, should we ascribe certain attributes to you that we should that we value in you more than if you had been born a female? Like for like things like empathy or uh, aggressiveness, things that can be cultivated. Mm -hmm. There, there, there might be physical, yeah. like, you might be better at one than the other physically, just innately. And there's a lot of overlap between, uh, between sexes there. But is there something that we should push in one gender but not the other? Because it seems like to me, if there are positive traits, we would want as much of them as possible in everybody. We would want everybody to be as empathetic as possible. We want every, everybody to be as physically strong as possible. Because even if one... I don't think, if, huh? I, we don't, I don't think that uh, physically strong is... Uh, it's healthy, you know. Right? Uh, I, 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 th I think we need diversity uh, in in society. Well, yeah, but um, the, I mean, it's kind of in, in uh, within reason. Like the stronger you are, the healthier you are. The more muscle mass you have to maintain metabolism and to maintain uh, like your you know independence throughout your life to maintain bone mass. That it's just healthier. Why is that not a good quality that we should be getting in everybody? Or versus empathy. Why shouldn't men be empathetic? What harm would that cause them? It won't. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, so certain uh, things are kind of, you can say, are good, like empathy. Mm -hmm. But certain things uh, are more, you know, uh, that, uh, it's good to have both. And, uh, uh, and, and, for, and for certain things, uh, the, uh, there is a, there's a difference between the genders, uh, at what they are better at. Well, but yeah, but you're, you're uh, saying so, on average. If we're talking about prescriptive attitudes, like prescriptive attitudes is well, basically it's the gender roles, yeah. Right. So, so the gender roles developed in a certain way, um, and and they developed to fit, uh, or you know, 
or maybe not. Maybe, maybe uh, at some point, uh, there's a lot, uh, I'm sure that some arbitrariness uh, came into and, and, and said, okay, the men are like that, women are like that, even though it, it is not uh, something that is innate. Um, but uh, so, and, and this is why it should be uh, questioned, criticized, and all that. But, but uh, uh, the gender. Uh, I, uh, the gender roles developed based on that, and and to based on based on our innate uh, qualities, um, and I, to, to come then and, and because w what you're asking me is why shouldn't we do away with the gender roles? Uh, and uh, well, to be to be clear, what I'm asking is why should we assign positive traits as masculine or feminine? Why can't there just be positive traits and and uh, negative traits? Or neutral traits? No, I don't think the uh, like uh, in many things it's not about positive or negative. It's, it can be good. Uh, soft, soft can be good, and, and tough can be good. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, definitely. And 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 and, and, uh, and I think that men, it's, ah, it's more me. it's more it's more masculine to be tough and more feminine to be soft, uh, just because of of, the, of our innate qualities. Um, and so 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 I would I would. Oh, uh, it can be pretty would, soft. Hmm? Men can be pretty soft. I've checked. <laughs> that was a joke. Uh, I'm sorry. Again, you woke you woke up. Sorry. Oh, that, it was yeah. a hilarious joke. You would have really laughed. I promise. <laughs> uh, um, but like, okay, uh, you you are kind of uh, breaking up a lot. So I think it's good that we are kind of wrapping it up because. Uh, oh sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I hope you can hear me. Uh, I'm really really sorry. It was two hours ago. What was your name again? Avad. All right. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Terrible with days. Thank you so much uh, for agreeing to have this yeah. conversation with me. I, I had a really, really good time. Uh, I hope you thought you were treated well, uh, and maybe we yeah, could do fine. it again sometime in the future. Yeah. No. Good talk. Uh, I think we. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was, Enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Really, really interesting uh, places that we went there. All right. Uh, I hope you're safe. I hope you're you do really, really well in the future, and uh, I'll see you around. Okay. Okay. All right, have a good one. All right, y'all. What's up? Ooh, that was that was interesting. Okay. Uh, y'all, thanks for uh, thanks for sticking around. I am really, really terrible about reading chat. I'm sorry. Uh. See, because I can't figure out how to do stuff. There we go. Yeah, this is a professional looking stream right here. All right, y'all. Uh, what y'all? What y'all think? Any questions for me here? There's a huge delay. The stream right here. All right, y'all. Uh, what y'all think? Yes, that is a pathologic background. All right. All right, y'all. I think I'm going to call the stream there. I really, really do appreciate you stopping by. Um, let me know how I did uh, in the comments. You can hit me up on Twitter. Tell me anything that you might have disagreed with, things you could, uh, thought I could have done better. Um, so, all right. Y'all stay safe out there, please. Please stay safe by yourself or with your loved ones that you are very... That you're comfortable with and express yourself however you want because you can be a soft boy or a hard boy or anything in between those are those are the two genders soft boy and hard boy I, we've narrowed it down to two I changed my mind <laughs> what <am> I, <laughs> I want to cut I want to edit that out <laughs> you're comfortable with